I think that in lower scrum DS, there has been a lot of activity, um, uh, mostly through some recent press releases. Um, and we await data actually in a few weeks at ASCO regarding uh, loose patercept and a metal stat. Um, but loose patercept recently reported out that the command study was positive. Uh, what that means, we'll, we eagerly await all the rest of the data. Um, but hopefully this just adds to our arsenal of tools in lower risk MDS and timing of those tools, you know, really thinking about how do we optimize the schedule of treatments. Um, I think that if we have a number of therapies that are effective in lower risk MDS, an important question coming up for the years uh, ahead is when, which therapy should go when? You know, when should we start with a given therapy? When should we be rotating to a second line or a third line of therapy? Um, that sequencing question, I think, is going to be really important as we get more uh, tools in our arsenal. Um, I think another major area uh, that we need to think about and that we have improved on is our ability to classify people who have truly low risk disease, meaning that their disease is unlikely to progress over the coming years. And molecular uh, diagnostics have really helped us better identify people who will live a long time with their MDS. Those are the patients for whom really sequencing and having more low-risk therapies is the most important. Um, similarly, people whose disease is going to progress, uh, you need to think more about how to try to prevent that progression and maybe moving them out of this so-called lower-risk cohort into a high lower risk disease or something along those lines. So for loose patercept, uh, uh, a great tool in our uh, pockets right now. Command study will be a really rich data set for us to look at. Um, also understanding its uh, application outside of just uh, uh, second line ring seroblast transfusion dependent patients. So I'm uh, excited for June to find out.